Hello, this video on financial risk management talks about credit risk, which is one of several risks facing financial institutions, especially uh, depository institutions such as banks. Other risks are summarized right here. However, this video series will focus on credit, liquidity, and interest rate risks. And by the way, for an extensive presentation on bank regulation and the Basel Accords and how those address credit risk management, please watch my video uh, series on the subject here on YouTube. All right, so what is uh, credit risk? Which, by the way, is also referred to as default risk. It, of course, is the most serious risk faced by banks, and it is the likelihood that a loan or a bond issue might go into default. And for that matter, it also refers to the likelihood that an insurance company might default on its payment obligation when a legitimate claim has been filed. So the ultimate problem in credit risk management is the impact of non-performing loans, bad loans that is, on the bank's net worth. Net worth is actually the equity value of a bank. And ultimately, um, the financial strength and health of a bank is captured primarily by how much equity capital it has relative to uh, how risky its assets are. And so if equity value falls below the regulatory threshold, as I summarize right here, the bank's in trouble and faces imminent closure or some type of mandatory restructuring. So consider this snapshot of a bank's uh, balance sheet right here. Now suppose the bank's total inflow of funds is 100, of which 90 is from customer deposits and the rest is equity capital. Out of this money, the bank uh, kept 20 uh, in cash and in reserves and then does business lending, lending out the remaining 80. So. Here's the bad deal. Suppose seven of this 80 right here is uh, of this 80 in loans is underperforming, in the sense that they are very unlikely to be repaid. So as you can see, this is going to force the bank to write down the value of the bad loan from 80 to 73, as I show right here. All right, so it kicks it down to 73. And of course, who's going to take the hit? Equity, of course. So there's going to be a $7 uh, charge off of uh, its equity value, reducing its equity from 10 to 3. And this could be very serious because if this balance of 3 here is below the regulatory minimum, the bank's definitely is in big trouble. And that primarily is the focus of bank regulation. So some of the remedies that banks uh, can consider would include um, proactive strategies that of course requires that banks do their due diligence and not f fall into the trap that they did um, during the 2007 mortgage crisis and the subsequent 2008 global financial crisis. Also diversifying credit risk, meaning that um, they would uh, not want to concentrate their loans in one customer or in one aspect of business or industry, something like that. Investing in low risk assets, <laughs> meaning that they invest in assets that also unfortunately would be low yielding. And these are primarily uh, investing in government loans. But this also raises, in some ways, a moral question when banks, especially those I've observed in developing economies, as a way to hedge risk, invest primarily in government loans, knowing that ultimately governments would pay, is more likely to pay them back than, uh, than private customers. And that is, um, who really is the bank designed to serve? <laughs> is it the government or is it the uh, private sector? So anyhow. So the, um, from a regulatory standpoint, maintaining sufficient credit risk capital, and that's going to be primarily tier one common equity uh, capital. And 
They could also consider credit risk insurance, such as credit default swaps. Although, as we observed during the 2008 global financial crisis, um, that too does have risk exposure because if the insurer, if the insurer defaults, as was the case with uh, AIG, then we do have um, a big problem on our hand. So credit default swap is one of several types of credit derivatives which are designed to protect lenders in the event of uh, borrower default. And so what that does in essence is to shift credit risk to the counterparty, meaning to the insurer. All right? And uh, of course, it's going to be a fee, as it is the case in every kind of insurance transaction. So that's what I've illustrated here in general. So here we have the bank, the lender, and here we have the uh, borrower right here. And so the bank lends the borrower money, and to uh, hedge this risk, the bank uh, uh, goes ahead and buys uh, credit risk insurance uh, from this credit default uh, swap dealer right here who promises to pay the bank the face value of whatever the contract stipulates in the event that this uh, borrower right here defaults. So credit risk insurance has become very prominent uh, especially since the 2000s and has continued although it did uh, abate a little bit after the sad story that um, well, came out of the 2008 global financial crisis. Others include total return swap, credit option, and credit swap. These are all uh, summarized right here, and if you wish to pause this video and read over them, that'll be good too. But this wraps up this uh, section.